Okay, so let's continue on creating our conditions. So the next thing we need to do is we need to duplicate the condition block we've already created. So we can just duplicate that using Command D or Control D if you're using Windows. And we're just going to change the name to two. And the only thing we need to change within the, the two condition blocks is just this number at the bottom. We're going to change that selected value to two. So moving on, actually, I forgot to going on about naming things. I didn't name things properly. Let's just name these so we know what we're looking at. So that's assigned into scroll position and that's assigned into selected. And we can just, well, we'll come to that. So this one's going to be car two. Okay. So if you select the move response, we're going to change the target to car two. And we're going to go into our formula in the wire position and we're going to make some changes. So we want it to, instead of card three, we want it to match card one. That's our wire position because we've now moved on one. Our card one has now moved to the bottom of the scroll list and we're now moving card two underneath card one. So that's why we need to start with card one's wire position now. Okay, um, to add to that, we're, we're going to keep this the same because we, all we really want is the height of the card. We've just, we've just chosen card three, but all the cards are the same height, so it doesn't really matter what this is. So this can just stay exactly the same, and the gutter is obviously still the same, so that can stay the same as well. So all we needed to change really is this, this layer name here at the very beginning. So we're going to click OK on that. We're going to move on to our sign. And this, this assign for, throughout, um, I believe throughout the rest of this um, tutorial stays exactly the same. Um, actually, it doesn't stay exactly the same for the, the second half, but certainly for the scrolling down the list, this, this, um, this assign is going to stay the same. So there's nothing you need to change there, which is good. And then finally, on the, the last side, we just need to change this formula to from two to three because we need to increment the, the selected item to the next one. And that's all we need to do for that particular block. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to duplicate the block again, Command D. This is where the, rep the repetitiveness comes in. <laughs> get my words in, get my words out even. We're going to change the layer of this name, this, this um, condition name to three. And we're going to change the selected value at the bottom of our condition to three. We're going to move on to our move and we're going to change this card to card three. And we're going to actually choose that as the target. And we're going to come into our wire value again. And this time we're going to grab card two's wire value. Everything else stays exactly the same. Let's click OK on that. And let's just name these layers so we know what we're looking at. Very easy to forget. I'm even forgetting. Not setting a good example here, am I? OK, there you go. So let me just check that we've done this all here. So yep, card three, that's correct. And the finally, the value we want to assign um, to the selected item is actually one. Now, why have we selected one? Because we've got to the end of our three cards. So because we're using, we're recycling the same three cards over and over again, we, need now, we, we now need to set the selected value back to one so we can start the whole process all over again. So we're gonna give this a test. Let's just come over to here. And in fact, let's just come out of our component back to our scene. Let's just bring our scene into view. And let's just scroll away and see what happens. So this is 
card one, this is card two, and this is card three. So these are the three real cards. And then we get to card four, which is now our first recycled card. And we get to card five, which is our second recycled card. Card six. And then we come back to card one again. So we can now continue to scroll. So we've now got our infinite scroll working as we scroll down. And that's pretty cool, I think. Okay, but we've got a problem. If I start to scroll backwards, you can see there's this weird blank space, like where's all my cards gone? And that's because we haven't actually told Protopy to scroll the other way. We need to also do that. So we're going to do that now. Hi guys, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, maybe you'll consider subscribing to the channel. That way you'll get notified when I drop new content onto the channel and you'll also be helping getting the protopilot name out there to the masses. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so now we're gonna create the reverse scroll. So we can use, we can re reuse some of the conditions we've already got, but we need to put in some slightly different values and there's some slightly new things that we need to learn. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate my last condition. There we go. And I'm going to change the name in structure. So this time I'm going to type two with a lesser arrow. So this is just to indicate we're going to, this is a condition that's just going to be handling the scrolling of in the other direction. Okay. And you may be wondering why I'm starting with two because two was the last one that scrolled up. So it's weird, but it just kind of makes sense to work this way. Um, to reverse the scroll position of all these objects as we've done it in the first in the first block. Okay. So we've done that. Um, right. So we need to come into our conditions and we need to start reversing things. So the first thing we need to reverse is the equality operator. So to move down, we were looking for a number greater or equal than. But to go the other way, surprisingly, we need to change it to lesser or equal than. So that's the first thing we need to change. Okay, the next thing we need to change is the formula. And we're just going to come into the formula here. And we need to change the operator here inside of our formula from plus to minus. So we're now looking for scroll position minus the card height because we're going in the other direction. Okay, let's click okay on that. And then finally in our conditions, we just need to decrement the, the selected value. So we were incrementing them when we were building the first part, which was to scroll downwards, we now need to decrement the value so we, we can go effectively the other way. So three becomes two. Almost a Spice Girls song that, but not quite. Okay, um, so we changed that to two and that's all we need to do in our condition block here. So now we're gonna move on to the responses. So we're gonna move on to the move response. We're gonna move on to the move response. That's a weird way of saying it. And we're going to change the target. So we want to choose card one. And we can just rename this to move card one. And we need to go into the formula in the Y value and we need to make some changes here. So we're gonna keep the target card2.y. We need to change the operator to minus. And we need to do something to this, this block here. And what we're gonna do, we don't actually need to change the values, but we need to just wrap it in some brackets. Now, why have I done that? So depending on how good or bad your maths is, um, you may or may not remember there's there's a there's a concept within maths called precedence. So depending on what operators you're using, 
whether it's minus, plus, or multiplication, there's actually an order in which that sum will get calculated. And for our instance, we need the value of card three height plus 16 to be calculated first and then minus from the card two Y position. If we don't do that, if we don't put these brackets around, it's going to create a completely different calculation and give us the um, completely wrong value. So we just need to wrap it in brackets to make sure that it gives us the correct value. And that's called precedence. Okay, so we're gonna click okay on that. Maths 101 out the way with. To be honest, I, I'm not very good at maths either. So um, it's all, all this stuff is learnable. The more you do it, the more you get used to it. Okay, moving on. So we're gonna to come to our second response, which is the assignment of the scroll position. And we need to come into this formula here. And again, we just need to change the plus to minus. And again, we need to wrap this value in our brackets. Okay, and let's click okay on that. Okay, and then finally moving on to selected, we don't need to do anything to this one because it's already got the correct number in it, which is number one, that's the one we want. Okay, we're getting close. Okay, so we're gonna duplicate this block. We're gonna call this three. And we're going to change the target. Sorry, actually, we're going to change the selected value to three here at the bottom. We don't need to change any of this stuff now because we've already changed it in the first one. We've changed all those minuses. So that's all good. We're going, so that's all we need to do in the condition block. We can now move on to our, our move response. And we're going to change this to card two. And we're going to select card two. We're going to come into the Y value formula and we're just going to change this first layer name to car three. So car three dot Y minus car three height plus 16. That's all good. So we click OK on that. We don't need to worry about the scroll position. Now we've changed it. That stays exactly the same. And then we just need to change the selected value here to two. Okay. One final block we need to do. So we're gonna duplicate this block. We're gonna change this to one. This name to one. We're gonna change the selected item to one. Moving on to the move response. We're gonna be moving car three. So we need to choose that in the target and coming into the Y formula, we just need to change the first layer target to card one. So we want card one dot Y. Everything else can stay the same so we can click okay. Moving on to assign scroll position as before, it stays exactly the same, nothing to do here. And then finally moving on to our final selected, we just need to change the formula to three. Okay, so let's give that a test. So we're just gonna come out of our component, back to our scene, and we're gonna come over to the preview window here and we're gonna give that a play and see what happens. So we're scrolling down, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. That's all working fine as previously. If we now reverse our direction, we can see that sort of moving, but there's something weird going on where it's not showing up straight away. So let's go back into our component. Okay, so let's go over to our conditions for the reverse scroll and take a look and see why we're getting that gap. So if we look at the initial condition block here, we can see that the first condition is looking for when the list scroll position is less than this, this value here. And this value is actually being calculated by taking the scroll position from the variable and minusing the card height. 
But because we're going the other way, we don't need to take the card height into account because the Y origin of the card is in the top left-hand corner, or actually the top corner, um, the top of the card. So we don't need to worry about this distance. All we need to take into account is the is the gutter gap instead. So this is where our problem lies. This is why we've got a card height's worth of gap between the cards when we reverse scroll. So we just need to change this formula. We just need to, let's just go into the formula mode and we just need to take this value out and instead we need to minus 16. And we just need to change that on the other two. And on the final one here, Okay, so let's go back to our scene one, see if that fixes our problem. So I'm back on scene one. I'm going to start scrolling downwards, scroll past the first three because we know they're already there. We're now into the duplicated scrolls. And if I now scroll the other way, you can see that now that gap has gone and we've now got a successful reverse scroll. Okay, but if I get to the top of the scroll, so this is effectively the beginning, and if I just pull down, I can actually see there's a card there. But this is the top of the scroll, and there wasn't any cards there before. And this is because, as far as our logic is concerned, it's going to continue to add cards in reverse to the, to the list, even though they weren't there in the beginning. So if you've got this, this effectively, this over-scroll on, we're going to need to just hide that. So we're going to go back into our component. Go to main, right click, go to main component. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add a rectangle. Let's just make our area a bit bigger. And we're just going to make this rectangle as wide as our cards. Actually, we can make it as wide as the screen. And what we're going to effectively do, we're going to block off that over scroll. So we're just going to make it fairly deep. And we also just want to make it so that it starts just above the first card. And we're going to change the background color to the same background color as our, as our background, effectively. We just want to make sure that that's the correct color. And then we've got a different color on our background here. So let's just grab this, this value. Go into our component. And we're just going to make the card 1E, 1E, 1E. Okay. Okay, so now we've got that card sitting there, which is effectively, it's going to, it's going to block any any other cards underneath so you can see that obviously you can depend on how far you scroll but it'll certainly handle that amount so if we come back to our scene and if we do a little bit of um scrolling down and then come back so again we now can see that we've effectively masked off that over scroll so it looks like it's returned back to the beginning of the um, of the scroll. Okay, so you now have a working infinite scroll. Okay, so that about wraps up this episode um, of how to build an infinite scroll. Hopefully, this has shown you how much you can do with Protopy and how much more there is to learn. I'm certainly learning every day. Um, saying that, all these problems are learnable and solvable. And a lot of the knowledge you've gained today will enable you to solve other complex problems as well. So feel free to riff on this example. I'd love to see what other solutions you might apply this to. Um, have a great day and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.